Hey, hey, hey. Woo, what's going on with this? Had a stray hair. <laughs> hey, you guys. Hello, hello, hello. Thank y'all for signing back on. We're going to try this again. Hello, Prophet David. I see Prophet David Armstrong on here. Y'all need to follow him and his wife. Hey, hey, hey. I see Donna and Alicia. And we're just, oh, we're waiting for our special guest to sign on and everyone else. Um, if, I'm just going to double check to see if he is on here. When you do sign on, just comment hi. It's not even letting me search for a guest. Hmm. Wow. So when our guest gets on here... I'm sending out an invite. Hopefully he'll get that invite. But, um, my Evangelist Michael, if you would be able to comment once you're on here with hi or hello, he should get the notification that we're on here. Oh, yay. Oh, my goodness. It's too. Oh, okay. Right. Oh, you're in Hawaii. Oh, wow. It's 2.04 p.m. in Hawaii. Wow. So, we're just waiting right now. We're just waiting on our special guest, Michael Champ. If you're on here, please comment, and I will try to add you that way. If you are on here, sir. And it's not letting me. Aha! It says that I'm adding him. So something should happen. <gasps> hey. hey! We finally made it. Yes, sir! How are you doing, Tiffany? Oh, I'm awesome. I'm, I'm very good. Uh, it has been a restful day. Lots of little things to do, but overall restful. Oh, good. Hey, well, well, praise God. I'm glad that we finally uh, got on here. Let me see if I can turn up the volume. There we go. That's good. Hey, you're sideways. So can Go ahead. You're sideways. Oh, Okay. Is it possible to turn it? Well, I don't know if this will change it or not. Wow, I thought I had everything set up here. Um, so, let me try to find a way to set this up so we can possibly do this. I don't know if that's going to switch around or not. You're up. So how you been doing? Oh, there it goes. Yay. Oh, we're doing good. We're doing good. Excited going to Texas tomorrow. So that's what I'm excited about. Okay. I'm just trying to get this uh, situated here. I'm sorry yes, about the inconvenience. Hmm. All right. Let me just take that off. Sorry. It's we have it perfect, you know, Facebook updates the app or something, and it's like, <laughs> oh, yeah, I know, and then you're surprised when you're trying to get on and everything, and <laughs> everything's going haywire on you. It's not, we're trying to be professional here. <laughs> we really need to prepare for these, I promise you. <laughs> but tell us a little bit about yourself, because I'm sure there's some people on here, they don't know who you are. Of, of course. Um, well, I'm Michael Champ, okay, and um, I have a ministry called Resurrection Fire International, and I do have a website. It's uh, ResurrectionFireInternational.com. 
that's a mouthful. But uh, a lot of my uh, ministry over the years uh, has been um, in, into the nations, uh, like uh, Africa. I, I think the first time that uh, I went over overseas uh, during my, my ministry and started my ministry was in 2000. And so I've been to Africa, I've been to Kuwait, I've been to uh, France, uh, I've been to Nepal. Uh, Jesse and I have been to Nepal together and, and did a lot of ministry there. Um, I've, I've done a lot of uh, ministry in uh, India uh, the last probably five years or so. I've been really in and out of India quite a bit. And then uh, this this year, I was uh, with David Hogan in Mexico at the beginning of the year. I was down there with him, and, and uh, David goes back. I mean, we, we are uh, a, a little bit more than acquaintances. Uh, I had David in um, back in, in uh, what year? In 1990, uh, I was doing street ministry in Columbia, Tennessee, and uh, – wrote David and he came in and, and it just was, I, I, that's who I was really imparted to. I, I hadn't, uh, I haven't been to Bible school, ministry, any training, uh, everything that, that you see the mirror, you know, just everything has just been, been from a uh, desperate hunger for, for the Lord. Uh, it's been more than just uh, miracles, signs and wonders, but it's always been about, about the presence of God and uh, and then I've been into Brazil uh, so so many times. I can tell you so many st stories. I've been uh, in and out of Pakistan and and like that. But really, like the, the things that have happened and the things that have changed uh, my my family's life. Uh, of course, everybody probably knows uh, uh, Jesse, Amy, and Charlie is is. Uh, they're my they're my sons, but what really impacted their lives was was really uh, just my wife. She's a powerful intercessor, and she's just I mean, when we got on fire for God, it was like uh, we just threw all the religion away, I... and, and we just started and, and started going after God. And and what happened was uh, through David Hogan and like that, and and you know we believe. Our family uh, strongly believes in in uh, prayer, fasting, and and, uh, and just the Word of God. You know, we're just yeah. and holiness. But and let me and don't get me wrong. I, when people say holiness, uh, they start thinking, "Oh my God!" You know, holy. You know, and, and they're like. And, we got to beat our flesh. We got to do that, and and that's not even what what holiness is truly about. As we have found out through the years, that it doesn't matter uh, what you do, you cannot be holy within yourself. Uh, you know what I like about about uh, God is says, "Be therefore perfect, even as I, your Father in heaven, is perfect." And in heaven, you know, and, and here we want to be perfect, and here we're like trying to be holy and everything, beating ourselves. What can we do? And it, and it's all of works and everything. But it's it's through the blood of Jesus Christ, Amen. and that is what we we are all about. My family is all about uh, winning souls, uh, healing deliverances, and 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 like that. But but the thing that will make you perfect, and really the word. Perfect is, is the word complete. And so if you really want to be complete, then, then it's, it's the blood of Jesus Christ. It's having Christ in your life. And we know that, um, boy, I'm kind of going on, on on a little tangent, little thing here. But, you know, they asked Jesus, they said, Jesus, what must we do to do the works of God? And, and you know what Jesus looked at him and said? He just said, believe in me. Amen. All you have to do, if you want to do the work of God, believe in me, Jesus said. Believe that my Father sent me here and that I am the Christ. And, and isn't that wonderful? So, so many people like are, are looking for holiness. They're looking for a relationship with God. They, they're looking, they, they want to be, be connected to them, but they think that their sins 
have, have separated them from him. But Jesus Christ, see, he died. He died for you. He died for me upon the cross. And, and, and through his blood atonement, he has, he has broken down that barrier wall. He has, he has torn the veil, that four-foot veil that kept, kept us from the Holy of Holies. He just he rent it, right, and, and it fell apart. And here we are, you know, and all we have, oh, man, I'm feeling more. And all we have to do is, do you want to be bold? Do you, do you, do you, want, do you want to be bold in the Lord? Do you want to be be consecrated in the Lord. Do you want to follow a heart and have a heart after God? Then, then just step on in. That's all Jesus says. Hey, he says, draw near to me and I'll draw near to you. And, and so we think by that we're doing all these great things. We think that we're doing, you know, in Psalms 27, it really caught my eye one day because the Lord, he said, you know, he says, um, he said, uh, you know, we, we go, I'm going to go and I'm going to, I'm going to do all these things and, and I'm going to draw close to God. Of course, he's going to draw near to me, but uh, we thought, yeah, we're going to seek the Lord's face. And, and the Bible says, the Lord said, seek ye my face. And then, then the answer reply, our answer reply back to the Lord was your face, Lord, shall I see? So it was an invitation. Mm. Christ through the Old Testament, way back then, was inviting people to seek his face, that as they th sought his face, that he would draw nigh and his spirit would come upon them for, for the work of the ministry and, and to do, you know, to, to be holy, to, <laughs> to be connected to him. And, and uh, so basically, that's, that's uh, what my ministry is all about. My ministry is about resurrecting the fire of Christ into the nations and into individual lives. I have always, always gone after the one. I've always, you know, um, I am, I'm like a minister where, like, if I go into India, um, yes, I, I don't, I don't do humongous big crusades or anything like that. But what I do is. I go in uh, to the pastors that want me to come in who, who can't afford me, but I'll stay three, three weeks. I'll stay a month with them. And, you know, I'm not in a luxurious hotel. I'm not, you know, like that. I'm living with them. I'm eating, breathing. I'm, I'm going into the streets. I'm, I'm going to the homes, house to house. And, yes, we'll do, you know, uh, small crusades of, of, of a thousand or 500. It doesn't, it's not the numbers that, that matters to me. It's, it's what, what is God calling me to do? And that's to go to the lost sheep, to draw them in, because that is the heart of God. We are living in such a time. I'm telling you what, I mean, if anything, my heart, my heart is for the young people. My heart is uh, to father them. And to to be an example to them that that you know what what I am doing at 61 years old they they can do also and and it's all by faith and it's all by calling. Amen. I love that. Do you guys y'all share the video? We have our guest on and the video is doing well. So please share it on your timeline or to your group. Somebody you think is gonna really be encouraged, especially if you know that they have a heart and a desire to love people, to go to nations, they have a call in their life, or if they even want to learn and to be taught this evening and to receive miracles from the Lord this evening. Because you know what, you guys, God's heart is to heal. It is to save. It is to love Amen. people. And one of the things that I really appreciate you about you, Evangelist Michael, is the fact that through everything that you say, everything that you do that I have just seen when you've been on live videos with other people or things that you've said or posted, the love of God is like, it is interwoven in everything. I mean, I can feel in everything that you do, I can feel the love of God so strongly right now. I'm, I'm having to fight. I, you know, I'm the, the host. I, I'm having to fight back tears because I just want to collapse in the anointing and weep because it's so strong. Amen. Let me, let, I want to tell you, you know, I want to really encourage, I want to really encourage the youth 
uh, of around the world, not just here in America, but but we we are here right now in America. So I, I believe that there's many youth, y young people. And what what's the youth? Well, you're not dead yet. You're never too old. You're never too young. You're you're you know you're you're never uh, too late. But but it's it's you're always on time in the timing of God, and and it's just. Like God says, if you draw near to me, okay, if you want to do something, then then look, go do it. You know, my stamp of approval is upon you, and, and we are ambassadors. I mean, that, this is a little bit of the message that I want to preach. We're, I'm preaching it now. But, but you know what? You may not be able to go to um, Bible college. You, you, you know, and I want to also say this. My... My... Uh, my family, my mother and dad were not, were not, my dad didn't get saved until uh, about five years before he died. My mother and dad were not following after Christ. This is something, this is a mantle that, that um, I picked up. This is something when I was a little baby, I remember laying, my mother putting me, I mean, out of all the things of a little baby, babies don't remember anything, but my mother put me on a couch, and I remember that the Holy Spirit come over as a baby, oh, yes. come over and hovered over me, and I knew as as a as a out of the mother's womb, a baby out of the mother, that God had a special calling. Not just it wasn't just for me, but it was on my family, yes. and so I decided to to pick up that mantle and, and run with it. My grandmother, I mean, uh, my grandmother, she was a, a holy roller. I mean, they were like, I mean, you know what I mean? They were tongue talking. They were like sawdust dancing. They had all the, the wigs going and, and, you know, oh yeah, they would get going. And, and boy, I mean, you know, and, and she would take me to, to church all the time. And, uh, I remember as a little boy playing with a toy car in the pew and everybody had left except the pastor and two women and another lady that was totally demon possessed and they were going to cast a demon out. And my grandmother come back over to the, to the uh, pew where I was and she goes, now, Michael, now if you're not saved, then you, you see that Bible over there? You put your hand on that Bible because that demon in that lady is going to come out and come after you. Oh, dear. <laughs> and, and, I, and I remember as a, a little child, and, you know, it wasn't like, uh, it wasn't like something uh, that I had, you know, uh, Romans says that, you know, confession out of the mouth, anything. I sit back and I go, am I saved? Do I believe in, as a little boy? I said, yeah. And I just started playing with my little cars and, and going like that. But, but it was something uh, through the years that was, was something. We, we can, I can trace back my lineage all the way back and, and, and like that, but I won't go there. But it was something that God had in my family tree that none of the Champ family had picked up. Until I, I boldly said, I'm going after God. I'm not going after religion. And, I'm, and it doesn't matter. And I just started to, I, I was, and God saw that. And he brought people into my life that truly imparted to me into that. You know, uh, it re, this reminds me of young kids in, in America right now. Let me just tell you a story. I, I really want to. For the youth of, of America, I want to like really tell you a story that's going to really touch your heart and and make you believe that that you know that God is really calling you. If you believe in your heart that that you that God is calling you into ministry or calling, it doesn't matter. Your ministry doesn't have to have a platform. Your ministry can be right where you work every day. I've done it. I, I burnt the, the, the candle at both ends. I, I worked in my younger days, and, and, but I was also a, a assistant pastor, at it too. And God just opened those doors, and, and it's like he said, that, that he's going to make room for your gifting. But I was in uh, Brazil and uh, I was ministering in Brazil, and, and there was a, a boy 
named Davey. And Davey, he was uh, in a punk rock, and he, he was with he was the uh, son of a father family that I was staying with when I was in Brazil, and uh, he was so totally demon possessed that uh, the people in the churches would they if they saw him coming down the street and he looked like they were gonna he was gonna go in their church they would lock the doors. I mean, nobody, I mean, they couldn't handle him. They, they, he was just that way. No, and, and he was like, they just said he was, he, he was, couldn't be saved. It was like nobody could do anything with him. And so I'm, I'm going to, uh, to the, uh, to minister. And uh, they, his parents got me in their car and they're taking me to, uh, to go to the church and we make a stop because all of a sudden Davey's concert, his band uh, group that uh, they were doing that night was canceled out. And so here's Davey. He, they stop and pick him up. He jumps in the back seat of the car with me. And I mean, and you know, Brazil, small cars and everything. And I'm in the back seat. And so I put my arm around him and I go, Oh man, Davey, man, how do you get your hair spiked like that, man? That's so cool. And he was telling me I had his hair spiked out and, I, and he had black makeup on under his eyes and he had black fingernail polish and he, and he was dressed in the garb and, and everything. And, and I was just telling him, you know, man, man, David, you know, you're, you're awesome guy, man. I love you, man. So tell me about your band and everything. And we got to the church. I said, well, you're coming in with me, aren't you? And he looks at me, he goes, man, they won't let me in there. I said, oh, yeah, they're going to let me in there. You want to come in? He goes, uh, yeah. and I go, no, come on in. It's all right. You're my friend. Come on. So he comes in. And so I, I minister a while. And then then short of the thing is I, I turn around and I look at David. I say, hey, David, are you going to let me pray for you? And he goes, yeah, you, you can pray for, yeah, you can pray for me. And I laid hands on him and the demons started to manifest. And he was, you know, went through the whole spiel and, and like that. But but the thing of it is, is Davy, Davy, he was, he, uh, he got totally delivered, set free. And so the next thing, uh, the next day I have him uh, interpreting for me in the churches. Oh, wow. <laughs> Why? Because I'm having pro problems with my interpreter that won't interpret properly of the things I'm saying. But here's a, here is a boy that always had a heart after God, but had been refused and, and kicked out of the church and hurt by the, and, and, but yet he was called of God. And, and so he's up there. And I mean, and it's just like, people are like, like, can't, I mean, they're, you know, they can't believe it. Here's this guy. He's still pumped out. You know everything up there, and and I'm not telling them what to do that because because see it's not by the outward looks you're it, because it's oh my it's Holy Spirit Holy Spirit it's, clean it's the whole you're it, exactly it's only through the Holy Spirit and and so he's ministering and like that but you know right now what what is happening in David's life right now he has a Christian band. He and he, the churches are calling him in to to minister and to sing, right now. So it's always about we are always we are ambassadors for Christ, and and we're it's we're always about the lost. We're always not looking at the 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 outward appearance, but we're looking. The Bible says that that Christ doesn't look at the outward appearance, but He looks at the heart and, and souls of men. And so that's what we do as ambassadors of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And I love how you brought that point out and you really drove that home about the prodigal, you know, about that young man, of what the church would call, what people in the world even, you know, many of them, if you looked at him and you thought about church, you wouldn't necessarily identify him as, part of the body of Christ automatically. Right. But when they come in, when they choose to give themselves to Jesus and they've got that heart for God, 
you know, the prodigal son's father didn't call for a big wash basin, a bunch of bars of soap, and a bunch of servants to scrub him from head to toe. He said, bring me the best robe, you know, bring me the, come on. the shoes, the ring, and they dressed him. He just had come out of the pig wallowing. Hello, feeding, who knows? He'd been, you know, probably almost homeless, what we would consider homeless. That right. he was living was in a homeless state. Um, and somehow he has survived that. He comes back. He's stinking. He's nasty. Probably didn't look anything like or even resembled the royal man that left. And yet his dad did not scrub him up first and then dress him. He said, let's put this on him. He's mine. Let's bring him to the party. It's Holy Spirit's job to tell somebody, okay, if the clothing, if something's inappropriate about it. It's his job to mention hey, maybe you want a different hairstyle. It's his job. It's not my job to go tell somebody. Now, if they come to me and say and mention something, you know, they want a job at the bank or somewhere we know that certain things don't fit in well, and I'm like, well, if you go to the appointment, you did ask, if you go to the appointment with certain things, they're just automatically going to put a, you know, mark out on you possibly, unless God gives you great favor. I said, but otherwise, if we you know, we're not to go up to people going, I need you to be these 10 things to fit into our fellowship in church because you looking, you know, we need to kind of put you on the back row because you're looking odd. <laughs> Amen. Those are the people that we need in the front row because the church is, the church isn't for the saved. The church is for the lost and the hurting and the unsaved. And, and that's what, you know, that's what it's all, all about. It, you know, I love 2 Corinthians 5.17. It says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And, and so even Jesus said that, that uh, the kingdom of God isn't over there or over there. It's not in the things of beauty or the things that we think it is in but no behold the kingdom of god is within and it's it and it transforms the the inside of the cup not the outside of the cup it transforms the inner man before it transforms the outer man and and so that i mean we who can resist the love of god who could put a limit on and keep bounds or, or, or keep uh, under control or regulate uh, the love of God in, 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 in the Holy Spirit and how the Holy Spirit wants to deal with people. Who could, you know, we are ambassadors. Who, who are we to deprive uh, anyone from uh, the freedom or an act of receiving Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? You know, uh, an ambassador of Christ doesn't hinder. Uh, ambassador in in Christ doesn't block or impede Ooh. or or obstruct anyone from coming into the kingdom of God. We we are we are to show the we are the in the very image. If we are in the very image of God, and if we have Christ in us, the hope of glory. Really, Christ in us, the hope of glory is, is not hope at all, but it's. Is Christ in us, the revelation of Christ being revealed to a lost and dying world. And that's who we are. We are sons and daughters of Christ. We are ambassadors. Huh. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Another thing as ambassadors, you know, like you were talking about, as an ambassador, Oftentimes, we're the first person to introduce them to Jesus if they haven't already had an experience with him. And how they perceive hey. us, how we, basically how we receive them is how they perceive the whole body of Christ. Amen. You know, go ahead. You, you, you know, let me tell you, I, I, I have so many, uh, I have so many stories, but I just feel like, you know, there's people here that, that. They need hope for their children. Maybe your child is, is drinking I, on drugs, uh, on alcohol, or 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 uh, you know doing things that that you know in the outward appearance uh, you don't like, or 
or, you know, maybe given a, the family a bad name, you know, the black sheep of the family. Let me, let me just tell you that that same boy, after he was saved, uh, he took, he brought me back into Brazil and, and we did more ministry. We did uh, church ministry. I mean, uh, uh, we were doing like fire tunnels and, and like people, were, you know, blind eyes were opening and deaf ears and, and the lame were walking, you know, you know, just like, and, and we were casting out, you know, it's, it's what Jesus commissioned us to do or commissioned really first, you know, he, he commissioned the 70 and they went out and they said, even demons about, you know, but, and like that, but, but we're, we were just doing the very work that, that Christ had commissioned us to to do through ambassadors. And he was trying to uh, break break into uh, uh, the street corner where in Brazil where all the kids, all the drug addicts at night would come in and it, because it was just that hot spot, they were selling drugs, doing drugs and all that. And Davey was uh, sitting there and um, he, was, he, he was looking at me, he goes, man, I've been trying to break in here and, and trying to minister, nothing's happening. and. And he, and he looks at me like, and what are you, what can you do? I mean, he looked at me like, what can you do? And I'm sitting there, I'm thinking, well, what can I do? And, and I'm going, I can't, bam, and something hit me on the back. And, and I kind of like stumbled a little bit. And I looked behind me to try to see, well, well what, who hit me? What was that? And, and it was an, I mean, I, it you know, I can tell you, uh, I, I, it was an angel hit me in the back and made me stumble. And when I did that, the, this boy right next to me, he looks at me and he goes, uh, he goes, hey, man, he goes, uh, uh, give, give me some of those drugs, man, you got, man. And like that. And I go, oh, no. I said, no. No, I can't give you this drug. Uh, -uh it's, it, no, you, you wouldn't be able to handle it. He goes, oh man, I can handle it. I, I can handle any drug. I said, no, man, this. I'm telling you, this drug I've got and I'm on is it, experimental, and and you will not be able to handle. It. He goes, man, come on, give me some. And I go, well, if I give you some, what would happen if you were on the ground? You, and all, what would all your friends say? Because I don't care what my friends say. I don't care. And I said, okay. I said, I'll give you some of this drug. You really want some? And he goes, yeah. And I said, well, raise up your hand and close your eyes. And so he raises up his hands and closes his eyes and I touch him and bam, he falls down on, uh, under the power of the Holy Spirit. And, and it's like uh, something just, it's like the Lord just spoke out through me. I'm like looking like, who, who's saying that? It was me. He says, God's not mad at you. If you need healing, you, if you need restoration, if you, if you want to feel God in your life, come up right now. God will heal you right now. And, and all of a sudden it drew the crowd, the whole crowd. And, there was this one guy there that uh, had back pain. The first guy that we went to pray for had back pain, and he had it since he was a child, a little, a little, a little child. And so we prayed for him, and then the, uh, you know, all of a sudden he started screaming. I mean, literally screaming like he was on ah, ah, and going crazy, and it drove got more people going and, and like that. And and I was looking out like, what's going on here? What? You know uh, what's going on? He goes, "My God, I'm healed! I'm healed!" And 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 all of a sudden, all these people wanted to be healed, and they were all being touched, and they were being touched by the power of God with with you know what with with uh, no one telling them that that they're doing wrong, no one telling them that they got to clean up before they come, no one telling them that they're bad, no one but. But it was the love of Jesus Christ touching their hearts. Many of them had not ever been touched by the Holy Spirit before. And, and God accepting, accepting them just that Jesus said, come as you are. Come right now. And that goes, with, you know, we're going in. We're going to go into healing and everything. You know, I put a watch out here to, uh, to help me to re remind us of what time it is. And can you see it? It's broke. 
and but 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 but, be, but what I want to do is it's not just you know uh, it's 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 saying that you know what we I want to leave so much time for so many people need healing and and and, it, and deliverance and and the the Holy Spirit just to come in and to touch their lives in such a way that they have, because see my, I'm not the greatest preacher in the world, but let me tell you, I'm just like Paul. He says, I have fully preached the gospel from, from Jerusalem on through, through miracle signs and wonders. And even Paul had a bad day. Even Paul even was up in the upper room and he was preaching way till midnight. And it was so, you know, you, they were going, well, uh, man, we're not feeling no Holy Ghost on this. We're not feeling anything. And a boy falls out of the upper window. But what does Paul do? See, the power of God was still there. And many of you may not feel the power of God, haven't felt it for a long time. But I'm telling you tonight, you're going to feel something that you've never felt tonight. You're, just like as Paul went down there and, and wrapped himself upon that dead boy and revived him back to life through the power of the resurrection life of Jesus Christ and brought him back and said, fear not, he's not dead. Let me tell you tonight, fear not because because you're not, not going to die. Fear not because you're, 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 you haven't been left or forsaken. You may feel like you're dead. You may feel like you're alone. You may feel in an abnormal circumstance in, in life right now. But Jesus Christ, the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ is going to come upon your life. And he's going to resurrect you. And you're going to come into new places. You're coming into new places, saith God, th this evening. Hallelujah. And, uh, and a lot of people right now, I, I, I don't, I, I don't want you to like, um, uh, 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 put down, I need healing for this right now and healing for that or pray for me that because see, I'm preaching to you right now. I'm not looking at, at who everybody that's on here and, and, uh, you know, your, your problems right now, I'm preaching into you so that you will have faith to receive what you're asking God for, that your faith level will rise to a point where, where all you have to do is ask and the door will be open. You, you've been seeking for so long and seeking for so long and not believe that, that you would find him. But here all along, the Lord has said, seek my face. And he said it to you so that you would receive the very thing that you need, that you would receive the very thing that God's heart has for you. Because see, God's not looking on the outward appearance of your your uh, your your uh, circumstances or what's going on or your children's life, but He's looking upon your very heart. He's looking upon your your children's heart and and what's going on. And let me tell you, they're they're not atheists. They're, they're not denying God. They're not God haters, but, but they are seeking for something that's real. They want something that, that is, is, is uh, that they can see the power of God because see the preaching that people, so many people have preached uh, something to them that hasn't gone in deep, hasn't gone, see, gone into their spirit, hasn't gone and touched their spirit but but let me tell you there's a word that sticks closer than than a than a brother that's jesus christ and say he is the word of god and his love for them will go in deep his love for them is transforming their lives even though that you may not see it even though that the, on the outward appearance billy billy or joe is in so much trouble or whatever but let me tell you they are seeking god god's calling them he's saying seek ye my face seek ye my face and they're saying your face lord will i see yeah your face lord will i see Ooh. and see there is that people um don't sometimes they don't understand that like you can have all kinds of gifts or different things and you can so totally disconnected from God and look like you're doing something, but you haven't prayed with him. You haven't spent time with him. You haven't sought his face. And there's not the fire in the presence. You know what I'm saying? But then when you're in presence, when you are spending time with him, you're seeking his face, seeking his heart to hear his heart for people. Everything about you changes. 
your atmosphere changes. When you go places, you shift atmospheres. You don't just operate in a gift or your gift. You're operating with him flowing just, woo, just. Amen. I'd go, I'd go to Walmart and, and uh, lay people out in the frozen, frozen dinner section. <laughs> so, Pharmacy aisle. <laughs> come on. They, they, from the frozen chosen, they'd be laid out on the floor and under the power of the Holy, <laughs> Holy Spirit. So their hearts aren't that frozen. Their, their hearts aren't, aren't that frozen. All are seeking God. All of, Jesus has written. He, he's written his love upon their hearts, and he's drawing all men to, to himself. You know, even, even at one time, it's so funny reading the Gospels, even the, the, the uh, disciples looked at Christ uh, at, at, on, a, on the outward appearance, through the fleshly appearance. But they said, wherefore, henceforth, now we know, now we know, know him no more after the flesh. Amen. You know, though that we've known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we know him no more. He, he, they looked at him as a carpenter's son. Even Jesus, he said, he, he asked them, finally, after, so, after all the miracles, after all the signs, and after the, all the wonders, he finally one day, he asked them, whom do you say that I am? And they said, well, many say you're this, and, and you're just a prophet, and you're, you're a carpenter's son, you're just this. You're, you're... But he said, no, whom do you say that I am? And, and the di disciples had to come to the realization, and, and Peter, he, he, by, the, by revelation through not Christ, not, not through the world system, not on the outward, looking at the outward appearance, but yeah. through the Spirit, said, you are the Christ, you are the living God. And Jesus says, upon this rock shall I build my church. You see, you see Jesus is revealing himself to, so, to your sons and to your daughters. Jesus is coming in dreams and coming in visions. Jesus is appearing, you know, in the, overseas, they're being beheaded, they're being killed for the gospel's sake. And you know what, just like my friend, um, a deal. Jesus, he was a drug addict. He, he was cutting himself with knives. A Palestinian, uh, a, a Muslim, a Muslim boy, cut and wanting to know who God truly was. And Jesus manifested himself right into his room. He says, a deal, a deal, a deal. I am Jesus. I am the Christ. I am the son of the living God. And your kids are looking you're, they're looking for something, and they're looking for Jesus Christ. They're, they're wanting the real thing. And you know what? A lot of times they're looking at their mother and father, and they're looking at them to see how are they going to react to them. How? Oh, let me tell you. I can tell you stories that I've been through with, with children in foster care, children in our homes. But I didn't look at the outward appearance. I didn't look on the outward appearance of my own sons, but I looked at the appearance of what Christ was in them and what Christ said about them. And I raised them and I spoke to them, love, the compassion of the Father. And, and that's what that that's what breaks the chains. That that what brings healing and deliverance into their, into their lives. You know, I, I'm just saying. Even even disciples, uh, the, the sons of thunder. You know, they they went to Samaria in a Samaritan village, and and they the Samaritans were looking at Christ on the outward appearance and saying, no, "We don't want any part of this Jew," and and like that. And and uh, the sons of thunder. Uh, who was it? John, James, and John. They they said, "Lord, shall we call down thunder and have and, and lightning like Elijah and kill them all, burn up the whole place?" And Jesus said, no, you know not what spirit you are, because the Son of Man has not come to judge the world, but he has come to, to, to bring and draw all men to himself, to himself. He says, I have not come to judge. And we have so many people judging right now. They're saying that God's judgment is in the world. God's doing this. God's doing that. But no, right now, God isn't judging the world. God is drawing all people th th through what the circumstance, what's going on in this world to look not at to the world to, to, for the solution, but for him to be the solution of their lives, to draw them into repentance, to draw them in, into love, and to, to draw them into 
to the kingdom of God where there is safety in, 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 in through his love. So that's where we're at. I'll let you go ahead and speak a little bit. Well, I just, I don't know how to make that any better other than, you know, some of them are a little bit used to, some of the people on here might be used to different terminology, but it's the same thing, uh, very much similar to what I have said, um, you know, in what the Bible, the word of God says it over and over again. When the great fisherman, that's God, he gives us the net. If we have the net and we have agape love written on us, if we have faithful, if we have, uh, you know, Jesus lovers, you know, that agape love, if we have that written on us, people jump in the net. But if we have judgmental, hatred, religious, and we have a net, we can chase people all day long with, with a net that we were given by the Lord, and they will run from us. And I don't want people running from me. I want them leaping. I want the fish that God has sent me after to leap into the boat, to leap into the boat. Amen. Come home. <laughs> they won't be jumping into the net. They'll be jumping out of the boat as fast as they can. But, but you know, we, we're not looking at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. Because, see, we walk, you know, the, the, the Bible says that we are to walk by faith and not by sight. And so, so everyone, you, everyone listening right now, if your children are far away, if your children are, are in sin or, or, or lit, you know, I, boy, that's a whole can of worms right there, that, that sin thing, because Jesus Christ, he died. He died for our sins upon the cross. You know, I, I'm, I'm beginning to only to think that the only only thing, the real sin is that would that is the only sin that really would really keep us away from Jesus Christ. That would just is is, is not is to reject Jesus Christ. That's right. Do you understand what I'm saying? Jesus Christ. You know, it's not in the outward appearance of sin that whether you're drinking or smoking or or doing those. No, because. Because that is not the true sin. The true sin is rejecting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And I don't want, I don't want to ever sit there and 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 reject someone on the outward appearance and be and say that is sin and and not really have them come in to 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 the love of Jesus Christ. Because once you step into that love, what once they step into that love of Jesus Christ, let me tell you the outward appearance of those, you know, drinking, smoking, or doing drugs or whatever that, those are just uh, appearances. Those are just, uh, uh, they, 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 they fade away. They, they, when, when they come in, they get out of religion, come into relationship with Jesus Christ. It, it just fades away. And, and they, and it's just, they, they are totally transformed. They are totally transformed the minute they, they, just go after God. And the minute they turn their heart towards God and, and, and saying, this is who I want. This is what I want. I want relationship with, with the Lord. My God, I, you know, I was in, in, let me talk. I mean, I'm Brazil. Let me just talk about Brazil. A little, uh, another thing I was like in between meetings. It was at night and I, I'm sitting upstairs in my room and I'm getting bored and, and like that. And I, and you know, I don't speak, uh, uh the language, uh, uh, Spanish and like that. Uh, it's not Spanish, but it's uh, something else. But anyway, so I, I go. I'm going for a walk, and I and I get walk down the stairs. I walk out of, of the building. And I'm just walking, and all of a sudden I see a gr group of bunch of young guys just standing over there, and, and I start walking towards them, and I go, "Hey, man!" Because most most of the youth in in uh, Brazil do know how to speak uh, English. Most of them can speak a little English. So I say, hey, I'll go over there to say, hey, what are you doing? Well, guess what? Well, they're smoking, they're drinking, and they're smoking pot. And, they're, and I walk up over there and say, hey, man, how y'all doing? They go, oh, man, we're doing good. And, and like that, and I'm just standing there and, and, all, <laughs> and like that. And I, I'm just, I'm not talking about, oh, you, you know, you sinner. You, I'm just saying, well, you know, they ask me, well, where are you from? I go, America. And I go, yeah, I'm a... I'm an evangelist, and they kind of, oh, oh, you know, I said, no, oh, don't worry about it, you guys, you know, I'm an evangelist here, you know, and the Lord, uh, he, uh, he kind of directed me over here, because I think that some of you guys need to be healed, and I said, 
for you instance, you've got a back problem and you've got a leg uh, and, and uh, back of your leg is hurting real bad. And, and, and you, you sprung your ankle pretty bad and you can't walk. And they go, oh, my God. He goes, how do you know that? I said, no, I know that because, because God wants me to heal you. How would you like to be healed right now? And they go, oh, yeah. And, and all, you know, God, I, I just lay hands on them and pray, and God starts to heal. He heals on there. And then they're, they're, we're just sitting there talking. They're kind of, you know, they're getting, they're not drunk off the beer or nothing. They're, they're starting to get you know, whacked under the Holy Spirit. And one, one, one kid, he, he lifts up, he looks up, he goes, he goes, wow. He goes, I never knew heaven could be so near, <laughs> so close. And, and do you think that, I mean, do you think that what they would ever, ever forget that experience that they had with the Holy Spirit? They, no, they never would. Not, they, they remember it to this day. So, so we're, Tiffany, yeah. let me just, just let me just say this. I'm going to let you talk a little bit and then we're going to start uh, praying with some people. And I believe I do have some words of knowledge, but, but Bible says, behold, behold, <laughs> what a word. Just that, you know, it, it makes you, when you just say behold, it makes you just stop. People just stop. And, and start looking at what? Behold, what, what? What? Behold, what manner of love the Father had bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Mm. Look at the lavish. He, I mean, go back to, to the love of Jesus Christ. Go back to John 3, 16. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't even have to quote that to most people. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that so whoever would confess him, oh my God. He loved, he didn't come, he, he even goes on and said that he didn't come to condemn the world, but to save it. Jesus Christ. And you know, the word save is sozo. And so many people just say, okay, I got it. I'm saved. Da, da, da. But you know what? Salvation is just the beginning of your walk with the Lord. And he knows that you need things. He, he knows that you, he, you, need, you need healing. He knows that you need deliverance. Mm -hmm. He knows that you need to be preserved. Maybe some of you feel like you're dying of of. of early early age instead of old age but he wants to transfuse you and, and, and preserve you and that you wouldn't die until you're the time of the numbering of the hairs of your head uh and and you know he wants to de to deliver you but dives also to make you completely whole wow amen 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 you know renewal is possible renewal takes place. Um, I try to tell people, you know, I'm 47 years old. I'm fixing to be 48. I don't look that. Why? I look younger now than I did a few years ago and a few years before that. I've lost 100 pounds there. It's probably wow. 100 pounds, but approximately. And, you know, I had that rheumatoid arthritis. God healed me of that. I was sterile. I birthed seven children. You name it. How did these things happen? It was called relationship. Amen. Yeah. And it makes me Pray. crazy because, you know, my uh, husband that he's now dead or whatever, he was sterile. So two sterile people get together and have a bunch of children. That's crazy. That's only God. And that's only documented. God. Two sterile people documented. You know, after the third one, they're like scratching through sticks on the top of my chart. And they're like, well, we don't know why you can have children. We evidently don't know what your sterility issue is. <laughs> and after that, they called me Fertile Myrtle. So I'm saying anyone on here right now, God is the one who redeems your times. He renews your strength, renews your youth, like a young man, like a young eagle. Come on. He, he reverses time. He can do that. Amen. Why can he do that? Holy Spirit lives on the inside of us, and he's outside of time. There is eternity living on the inside of you. He can give you what the enemy stole. 
And for many of you on here, I want to tell you this right now. You think he won't do it because you did these things to yourself. But I'm here to tell you, Holy Spirit resides on the inside of you. He's, he loves you. He cares about you. And he will do it even though in spite of the fact you did some of these things. I've seen the people who smoked and they were raised up off their deathbed. They had, had they believed that lie? Could you imagine if they believed the lie that they did it to themselves so they can't be healed? They would have died. But instead, they were completely healed. Because that's how loving God is. Amen. Ooh. Come on. I, I, want, I want to just also tell um, people before we start praying for you and like that, um, <clears throat> I, I want you to just really uh, take this into you, to, to your spirit. This is one of my favorite passages of, of the Bible. It says that he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Uh, you see, if God was going to hold anything back from you, anything back from you, he would have held back his son from from dying on the cross. He he would have come down, just like Jesus said, if I had if I not asked my father for a legion of angels, shall he not send me send me ten thousand or whatever? A legion, how many angels to to save him from dying upon the cross? But even God did do that. God God loved you so much and he wants you to be perfectly whole. He's not mad at you. He's not judging you. As a matter of fact, some of you are saying, well, I'm in a desert. Well, well let me tell you what. Even in the desert, mm -hmm. even in that desert, God ministered, sent angels to his son, Jesus Christ, and ministered to him. Even in the de desert, when he was bringing out Israel out of Egypt. Even in the desert, he supplied water, man and food, everything, quail, everything, uh, a shade, shade, a glory cloud over them during the day, fire around them by night to protect them. You see, it, it's just a little tweak of, of how you want to perceive things. Because let me tell you, there's nothing, nothing that God will not do for you right now where you're at you're not in a desert you're you're in a place to to receive fresh anointing to receive even even oh my lord even where angels would come in and start ministering into and father right now jesus christ right now we release ministering angels right now into the homes right now into every home Every person's heart right now, every in every Lord, you 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 search the hearts and minds of men. Lord, no no man knows the spirit of man except the spirit of God which is in him. Even so, no man knows the the the, the Holy Ghost. It's or God. It's by the Spirit of God. And see, God knows your children. He knows where they're at. He knows everything. And you know what? He's reading their minds. He's reading their hearts right now. And, and my Lord. And so, Father, we just ask right now that you start sending the fire of the Holy Spirit into the homes, into the children's lives right now. Father, we ask for restoration right now for children. Father, we're asking for the prodigal sons and daughters, God, those who are far away, God, those that that are lost, those that seem like, oh, they would never come home or, oh, they would never come to God. But we say right now by faith, they're coming to God. We, we call them forth right now in, in Jesus' mighty name, in the mighty name of Jesus. There's people on here talking about one young man. He, uh, he's one of the young millennials. He says uh, he can't stop praying in tongues right now. He just can't stop speaking in tongues. <laughs> 
<laughs> Amen. And you know what? That's what it is because it's all by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Spirit, we're, it's like the day of Pentecost. You got to live the day of Pentecost every day, speaking in tongues, allowing the, the fire of God to come down and just consume you. You may, oh my God, you may, you may even act like you're drunk or even may act like you're out of their minds, but in, you would be in the mind of God. And so Holy Spirit, we just ask right now that the baptism of the Holy Spirit release the fire of the baptism of the Holy Spirit upon the youth of America right now, upon everyone, Father. And and if you've never spoken tongues right now, just start speaking right now. It's, it's a utterance. It's given by the Holy Spirit. And all you've got to do is open your mouth and walk by faith, speak by faith, utter by faith. And we release that right now. We release the power of the Holy Ghost on, on right now. Hallelujah. Power of the Holy Spirit right now. Release the fire of God upon everyone from the top of their head. God, we ask just like unity, unity, unity of the brethren. It's, it, it's like oil, Father, oil, oil that starts upon the head of, of the priest, upon the sons of God. And Father, we release the unity, we release the oil, the anointing of the Holy Spirit upon them right now. And we, we just say flow right now, Holy Spirit, flow right now. We release the flowing oil of the Holy Spirit and fire right now. You shall be baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire and fire. And we release that fire of the Holy Ghost right now into your lives. There's a, there's a lady, Ruby Cook. Ruby, hello, I hope that you're... Uh, that you're watching, if 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 that if you're watching right now, Ruby, just say hi, say yes, say something. I want to pray for you right now. I said, Ruby, you've been part of the family, of uh, and friends of the family, uh, for a long time, and so I want to just pray for you. You said that you had bone spurs and your foot's in a in a cast and, and like that, but and you also have anxiety, anxiety, and so right now I want to come against. If that's you, if that's you, if you, if you, you right now are fighting a spirit and the anxiety along with Ruby, then right now I want you to say, yeah, that's me. Just go ahead right now. Just type in yes, yes, or that's me. And right now we're going to start praying for you right now. Tiffany and I are going to start releasing the power of the Holy Spirit upon your life. And I'm telling you right now. Those bone spurs right now, if, even if your foot is in a cast, I've seen God fuse bones together where people jumped out of their cast and go on the doctor and God says, and the doctor says, I don't know how it is, but your bones have been fused together. And right now we're calling for bones to fuse together right now. We're calling for broken ankles and broken legs right now. We command the, the bones to be set. We're commanding the bones to heal right now in Jesus' mighty name. And we command bone spurs right now in, in, in ankles. In, in, in the heel bone and, and, and in the bottom of the feet right now, all heel spurs and, and bones right now to be healed right now. We command them right now to dissolve. We command the fire of God to go into the bone spurs right now into the bone and into the marrow. And right now we command them to be dissolved right now in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. We command bones to be healed, bones to come together right now, and bone spurs to dissolve. And right now, even even earlier today, the Lord gave, gave me a, a, a word of knowledge about somebody watching this tonight that they they're they're having a. Tr trouble in their pregnancy that the baby is turned in the womb or is breached or something's wrong with the baby something's not right with the baby right now god is is on that god is is going to right now heal and and he's going to do, do a deliverance right now in the womb right now and many of you just as tiffany said that you could get pregnant that you you were sterile marital or whatever and your husband you are trying to have children but it just doesn't seem to be happening right now god is healing uh those issues right now he's healing womb issues right now he's healing uh men 
men's issues right now. And so, Father, right now, we just release that anointing of God right now into that mother's womb right now. And, Father, we speak peace right now to the baby. And we say, baby, turn. Woo! Turn, turn, turn. Woo! Position. We ask that, Lord, that, that, that you position the babies in the wombs right now, that they would be uh, not breached, but uh, being ready to be birthed right now. And, and right now, we just speak to wombs right now, even, oh, right there's a word, be ready to be birthed, Re be ready to receive right now, birthing, <laughs> receive the womb, your, your inheritance, your children right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, hallelujah. We have just allowed the Holy Spirit right now to move uh, uh, on your people, to move in them right now, releasing the fire of God right now. We release fire of the Holy Spirit. We release fire of the anointing of God. We release the, the anointing even oh, the, as we even go on and, and press in deeper into the things of God, into the things that God wants to to do to this broadcast. The anointing is coming down further. It's dripping down. It's going down upon the face. It's dripping and saturating the face and into the beard, into that thing. And right now, I speak against diabetics right now, diabetes, that spirit of diabetes, just like, like I did. And, and the girl was healed just last two weeks ago from diabetes. I speak right now to a spirit of diabetes. We command right now the blood sugar right now to come to be normal right now. And we say that that God has good, given all things are good to eat right now. And we say whatever you put into your body, that, that your, your body will digest and your blood level and your sugar levels will stay normal. And, and we just bind that spirit right now, diabetes, and we command it to be loose out of your body and ask what's up. And we ask Father Lord right now for supernatural weight loss right now, even with people that are even having, uh, because of diabetes problems and weight, weight problems right now, right now, Lord, we ask that a supernatural occurrence starts to happen upon them right now as we speak, and, and that supernatural weight loss starts happening. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And um, also, uh, there was, uh, the Lord started speaking to me about about uh, the occult, and there's people that are are their their uh, son, their son, their son is in in into the occult, very heavy. And uh, right now, the Lord said that He's delivering, and even because that your son, and it even I I'll even go sons and daughters. To daughter, but I'm speaking uh, to one. Your son is in a cult very heavily, and because of it, you're battling and headache. And right now, the Lord is going to deliver your son out of the occult, and we break every demonic spirit, every spirit. We break it off from generation curses off from your life, off from his life. We speak the anointing in, and, and we just come against all occult. Spirit and, and the fire. We come against even the spirit of suicide and uh, and depression right now. All those that are listening right now that have a spirit of suicide right now, I break that spirit right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The Lord rebuke you off of them right now. Yeah. The Lord rebuke you. And the anointing, is, even as the anointing of the fire of the Holy Spirit is upon and going down in, in, upon the beating of the head, right now we are from, from witchcraft, from occult spirits, from suicide and depression, and even anger and torture. Somebody is being tormented right now through the spirit of torment and now we we speak of 
believe a, a lady right now that has a tumor and it's and it's on the left side of the body and it's a tumor both on, underneath the arm under on the left side of the body and also i will even go even further if there's other people here uh, because the reason why i i, I pinpoint because uh, when 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 you pinpoint the one then the others fall and so right now uh I'm pinpointing the lady that has the tumor underneath the arm. If that's you, please just go ahead and type in, yeah, that I, that's me. And, and right now we're praying for that tumor to completely yeah. dissolve in Jesus' mighty name. In the mighty name of Jesus, yeah. we command tumors in the body. People that have tumors right now in, in the body, in, in even. And come right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We we speak to you right now. We come against you and speak the blood of Jesus and we apply the blood of Jesus And I command the root of tumors to dissolve and to die right now in, in Jesus Jesus mighty name. Uh, Tiffany, did you have anything you wanted to, to say? Any, any prophetic word? Yes. I wanted to add to that, that birthing thing that you were speaking on. Also, a spiritual aspect right now with regards to that. This can be the birthing month, okay, for many people. Oftentimes, the Lord told, told me this a few years ago. He told me, he said, a lot of people, they're like, well, September should be the birthing month. But I want to tell you, God has us do it in waves. And the reason he has it doing it in waves and stages is because if the enemy knew on this day, at this hour, we would all birth, he'd have it all set up, ready to swallow babies. Okay? So that's not how God does it. It comes on us as well as the enemy by surprise. But nothing takes God by surprise, and he allows us to know when it's time. And so I speak to everyone on here that is ready, that your baby, you may think it's early, but God says it's right on time. I command that water to break, those babies to descend spiritually, and for you to birth the things that God has on the inside of you, to birth the gifts that he's placed on the inside of you to come out and across, to go across the plains right now in the name of Jesus. By that, I mean an open field. It's like you're going out onto the battlefield, but you're going out with angels flanking you on the right and to the left. Angels flanking you in the front. Angels, I don't know what the word flank means. I may have said that wrong, but you have angels on the right, the left, and the front and the back. You have angels all around you, and they're over your head. They are propelling you out and forward with and what watching the infant or the children that you've birthed. And for some of you, I want to say this. There is a movement in the earth that has been birthed and it's fully walking and talking and it is going out the door. That means evangelism. And for some of you, you need to follow your baby, your child that's fully walking and talking. Take it and go with it. Follow it. It is led by God. Take it by the hand and hang on for dear life because you're about to have some fun. God's taking you places. He's going to pull you to the north, the south, the east, and the west. <laughs> and you're going to have fun in Jesus like you have never had with anybody else. And that means some things are going to fall away. Some of your relationships, some of your friendships, but that's okay. He's going to bring in the ones you need. He's going to bring in the safe people. He's going to bring in those that he wants to connect you with. So go in the glory of God and with his great love and favor in the name of Jesus. Yeah, hallelujah. I want to The Lord started to tell me about cancer. There's some of you maybe watching or, or it's in the family of, or a family friend, but, but right now we want to come against stomach cancer right now. Mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now we come against the spirit of cancer right now. We come against stomach cancer. Right. We declare Ooh. a cancer. Did 
كده ليه ده ليه ده ليه Evangelist Michael, um, we can't seem to hear you. You're breaking up really, really bad. Okay. Uh, I don't know. What, what do you want me to do? Can you hear me at all? We can, but it's kind of broken up. It's very, very blotchy. And it's not just your picture. It's the voice coming out. Um, is anyone else using your bandwidth? Usually it's that, or oftentimes if it's not someone else in your home using the bandwidth, it can mean your phone is getting warm just because we've been on here so long. Ah, are you speaking? Can you hear me? Uh, I did hear, can you hear me? But that's about it. I can't hear what you're saying. Oh, wow. I'm so sorry, Evangelist Michael. That, that's okay. Maybe Thank you. I'm going um, to get your website information. I'm going to put it um, at the top of this video where people can sew into. I know I think you said you had an upcoming trip overseas and such so people can bless you so they can sew into your ministry um, according to how Holy Spirit leads them to do that. So you guys, I'm going to either get his website information or PayPal just so the man of God of the hour can be honored um, and be blessed. And so you know what, you guys? Oh, well, it's still frozen. And, oh, I was hoping it had come out of whatever it was doing. Okay. Well, again, like I said, we're going to put his website information up and his PayPal. And you guys, this is an awesome man of God, an awesome family, an awesome line. And do you know what? He is like you. By that, I mean, go pick your mantles up. Go pick up and say yes. Be the yes men and women of God. Pick it up. And obey the Lord. Do what God is saying. You know what? Um, you know, he said his mother and father weren't living for Jesus. Okay? Um, and so, but look at him. Look at the children and the fruit, the good and awesome fruit that has produced from someone who just said, I say yes, Lord, and I'll obey you. So, you know what, you guys? Um, we love you. What time? Do you? Evangelist Michael, do you want me to try to put you off the video and back on? Someone mentions that. Yes, you can try to take me off. We're going to try that. We are going to try that. That would be nice if we could finish the video completely. Um, oh, is he back? Okay, it's not letting me send him an invite. Can you comment? Try to comment on the video. If you're still on the video, try to comment. And let me see if I can add you back on, Evangelist Michael. Sometimes that actually fixes the bandwidth issue. I don't understand everything about bandwidth issues. Oh, it's all still frozen. There we go. Let's see. No, it's not. And you guys, this is so hilarious. It's like it's purposefully, every time I scroll to his name, his name purposefully like jumps around. <laughs> it's hard. I can't bring him back on. But you know what, you guys, like I said, I'm going to put his information on here. And I apologize for whatever caused that, whatever happened. But you know what? Um, every form of addiction. I believe we kind of hit the massive things tonight. Go back and watch the video if you're just now signing on. The drug addictions, alcohol addictions, um, you know, any forms of addictions. Um, 
you know, all kinds of things that overtake families. And so, you guys, we absolutely love you. You're awesome. And y'all have a wonderful evening. And we'll talk to you later.